Hi, I'm Dr. Michael Latola, and I'd like to welcome you to the 2014 Technology Summit from Patterson and Sorona. We've got our panel assembled and a special guest with us today, Noah Levine from Dental Compare. How are you doing this morning? I'm doing just fine. I'm Thank glad you. you were able to make it. Uh, to your left is Dr. Sam Purry. He's the director of uh, CAD CAM at Spear Education and the founder of CEREC-Doctors.com. To his left, Dr. James Clem, who's the founder and director of CAD Star and maintains a private practice that does almost everything in Santa Rosa, California. To his left, Tarun T-Bone Agarwal, uh, best known for integrating uh, comb beam and CEREC into uh, implantology cases that uh, make dentistry super convenient for his patients. And to his left, uh, Mr. Roddy McLeod, the director of the VP of CADCAM for Serona Dental in Germany now, overseeing the development of all these great products that uh, really are making a difference in the lives of dentists and patients alike. Well, Noah, you got a little opportunity to see some of the press conference uh, that we did, and I know you you were at the one last year and got to see it. So I know you're pretty up to speed on this technology, and I'd like to hear uh, any questions you might have for our panelists. Well, to sort of kick things off, you announced a whole slew of new features for the software, some new connections, and I guess which of these new additions to the CEREC system really do you think is going to have the biggest impact for someone who would be new to CEREC? I think that's a great question. I think it's got to be the imaging the acquisition hints, as well as the clear models. Um, one of the features that we have with the new software update is the resolution of the models is absolutely fantastic. I mean, it's crystal clear. Uh, Dr. James Klim, I've heard him mention the term retina display. Um, and so it's, uh, I think that's going to be one of the biggest features for new users because now they can scan with ease. Uh, not that it wasn't, that it was difficult before, but there's a learning curve as with any new technology. But today, I think it's much easier to say, you know, give it to a, an auxiliary or a staff member and say, here's the camera, go scan, and I think you can pick it up without much effort whatsoever. And when I got involved with digital impressions, um, much like with regular impressions, a dentist will take a polyvinyl impression. It won't be completely accurate and they won't really know. And it was possible to do the same thing with a digital impression. There really was no feedback telling you whether or not you'd done it correctly. So, you know, these acquisition hints or these scan hints, I think for somebody just getting involved with it, what better than almost having somebody like a mentor standing over your shoulder walking you through saying, you know, scan a little more over here, scan a little more over there. I think for a beginner, that kind of hand-holding, James, would be fantastic. You know, uh, Mike, when I think about training doctors, basically this is how it's done now. Here's the camera, go ahead and image, and they get it right. That's amazing. In addition to that, you can do the same thing with your team. And so what it does is that it raises the bar of impressions because as long as we don't get our tongue in a way or, or a finger, which we can easily cut away, you know, digitally that is. Right. Uh, though the other thought is interesting. Uh, <laughs> I think what it does is that it makes our record keeping very predictable, our record taking, I say, very predictable, and as a result, we get very predictable results. Anything that simplifies, I think, the scanning process, Noah, for a dentist is going to make it easier uh, for them to, to take that first step and dip their toe in the water and say, all right, I'm ready to give this a shot. Now, with a panel here of power users, I really would be remiss for not asking, which of the new features gets the three of you most excited? Why, why is the excitement always come to me? <laughs> You're excited. As, as if we don't know my answer. It's implantology. It's it's and, and back to your original question, Noah, is um I don't look at it as any one feature that's gonna bring more users in. I look at this as a constant evolution of what Srona has done over the last five years, and that's taken me on a journey where one by one they have expanded my practice from implantology to diagnosis to now orthodontics to chair side implantology. But the implantology specific Specifically to me is, is unbelievably exciting. Uh, what we're able to do, Noah, is um, we're able to take a patient, uh, if you are missing a tooth, and you could walk into my office today, I could digitally plan, design, and fabricate a surgical guide, place that implant in an ideal position today, and then I could have you come back after an integration period of two to three months and have you come back and give you a final restoration that's customized to fit you in ideal perfect uh, position and placement, uh, give you a final restoration, and, and you can walk out of the office. And it's, it's game-changing. It's changing the way we do dentistry. It's changing the way we provide uh, services to our patient. 
I would vote for the Plan B button. I don't know if you heard about that one. You know, this is something that's on the screen that uh, allows a dentist who realizes, you know, I'm not totally comfortable making this restoration. Maybe they start to make one and it doesn't look good and they try it in the mouth and it's like, oh, this is tougher than I thought. Uh, they can hit that button, send it right to the lab. Maybe they're running out of time. It's the end of the day and they ended up having to doing a root canal in addition to the crown prep and now they're out of time and their assistant has to leave at 445. They can bail on it and just hit that button. As a lab, we plan to send people around to Sarek offices and just push the button for them and not tell them and just get, get it all going to the lab. But it is a great feeling to know that you're never stuck there on your own having to make this tooth number nine for a patient or pull out some polyvinyl that you can just send it with the digital impression you took and have a way out of this situation. We, we oh, go ahead. You go, Sam. I was, I was going to say, we covered some, uh, you know, some of the basic features that are updates earlier. Uh, but there's a lot more that we haven't had a chance to cover in this press conference. I mean, you have enhancements in the virtual articulator. You have the ability to open up the vertical on patients. You have improvements in the entire proposal so that really it's you draw your margin and you're essentially done. You have easier imaging. You have the ability to mill more materials with the carbide milling. So it's not any one thing that is my favorite feature, but I think it's just all of the different features that make the entire software much better than what it was previously. Yeah, in addition to, I mean, adding to that, uh, Noah, is that I like to look at it this way. We now have the ability for the software to get a DNA proposal of that patient. Even anteriorly now, we have morphing tools and we have customizing incisal variations that we can match the tooth next door in the labial anatomy. And as and is, is someone who loves to do ceramics, I can do most of that virtually now with just a few strokes in, in a very short period of time. So just to recap, Noah, Sam's favorite feature was all of it. Way to take a stand. <laughs> Way to take a stand. <laughs> Well, one of the other new things that was brought out today uh, was, uh, you know, you guys showed off some of the features that are coming with the ortho module. And uh, our clinical director, Dr. Jeff Rohde, was watching the press conference and sent me some questions, and he seemed fairly excited about that. He had some questions that uh, pertain to the ortho, and one of them is, is the ortho scanning something that's going to be available for current Omnicam users and any of the other scanners, or is it something that's a new feature? Well, I know, Roddy, hardware. why don't you cover the integration process? Sure. Um, the guided scanning technique that's demonstrated in that orthodontic uh, work-in-progress software um, is, uh, is, is extremely interesting because it is the first time where we've really been able to guide the user in a fashion that allows them to predictably acquire a high precision scan time after time. So a very reliable procedure for, for acquiring scans. And we agree that's also attractive for restorative application. And the question is uh, when, we, when we integrate that, that's certainly on our product roadmap, it's on our timeline. Um, when we'll be successful with that is a different story because it's a slightly different uh, situation because typically with restorative dentistry, for example, you're only taking a portion of the arch and how should you start that guiding? How should you guide the customer through that? We're in the study phase of that now and then uh, in the future we'll, we'll definitely put guided scanning into restorative because we see the advantages, which is, and many of you have touched on it here already, the guiding principle behind our uh, research and development today is about creating safe, predictable, and reliable steps for people to jump into CAD CAM. People recognize, I think, that CAD CAM is here to stay. I think they recognize that digital dentistry is part of their future. And I think the question that people wrestle with, so to your new user mm -hmm. question, I think the, the question they're wrestling with is, who's the market leader? Who's the safe entry point here? Who's going to support me on my journey? Who's going to expand my indications, my range, my practice applications? Who's going to help me drive the patient experience in my practice? And this is the, these are the guiding principles, I'd say, behind the, the, the product development. Mm -hmm. And uh, so when this does roll out, will current Omnicam users have access to uh, add the ortho module to what they're doing to do ortho through their CEREC systems? Yeah, absolutely. We, 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 we would offer the, the CEREC ortho on a standalone basis so that if somebody doesn't have a CEREC, they could just go into that orthodontic scanning um, 
product. And we'll also make it available for our, our Sarek Chairside customers. So those who, who want to offer uh, additional ortho services through their Sarek uh, will just have to do a software update and, and they'll have access to that. And uh, one other question related to this is, are these uh, full arch scans, are they accurate enough to go beyond some of the clear aligners and be able to do prosthodontic cases like uh, removable partials and uh, implant supported hybrid dentures? Uh, that is a really loaded question, Noah. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that came directly from Dr. Rohde. Oh, th <laughs> thank you, Dr. Rohde. <laughs> um, that's all in study phase is what I would say because there, there's a couple of issues you're dealing with there. One is scanning edential surfaces with an intraoral camera has challenges. It's not just a Serona thing. It's it's any intraoral. And so um, that's that's something that needs to be looked at and, and prepared for for the future. But we're optimistic that using the guided scanning technique is one one of the pieces to that puzzle. You need to be able to... Uh, guide the user in a way that they're predictably scanning the same things over and over again so that the software and the system can understand what the inputs are that are coming into the into the system. Mm -hmm. Now, with all of these features, it seems like uh, the CEREC system, you know, essentially for the three of you uh, is pretty much the hub of your practice. Is this something that, you know, a new dentist, as they enter into CAD CAM dentistry, you know, can they start in one area and sort of build on how they use it? What do you see as, you know, sort of the growth in terms of bringing in CAD CAM and then making it a part of your practice? I, I, know, th I know the early adopters uh, had to have quite a bit of fortitude to get into this. I just trained a, a doctor last week who's been in practice one year, and he's flying with it. it it's like he, he's integrated, he has that computer culture. I don't, and I can use this. In fact, I've only been texting a year. But, uh, you know, so even with those limitations for someone my age, I've been able to master it. But these, uh, to, to adopt it into a practice right now is so simple because so much of the, uh, the intuitive sense, it's almost like Siri on my iPhone. It, it kind of like talks to me, which is soothing at times, but it, it's so predictable. And I don't have to use a lot of tools to get a good, great result because it's integrated into the software for me. I think with the early versions of the system, you had one reason to buy it. I want to do my crowns in office versus sending it out to a laboratory. Today, you are able to do crowns, inlays, on these veneers, all the restorative stuff. You have the ortho application that we just talked about. You have the ability to restore and plan and surgically place implants utilizing the Cerex software. Um, so, you know, everyone's going to get into the technology for their own reasons, and you can pick that one niche. I have a friend who's a periodontist who purchased the system, and what he does is uses it for the guided placement of implants as well as fabricating temporaries and abutments for his referrals. So he'll create the design with input from his referrals, and then he'll give them the abutment so the restorative dentist can place that and make the final restoration. So... You know, yeah, you absolutely pick one niche, but then you can expand to all the other options that are available with the system. And earlier in your practice, you've got a little extra time while you're building your practice to be able to, to do these things. And let's face it, the, the younger graduates are just more drawn to this yeah. type of technology than the, than the older doctors who a lot of them don't even know how to turn on their practice management computer or run any reports from it necessarily. So um, <laughs> they're drawn to it. They grew up with iPads in their hands. I see two-year-olds all the time. I think to them, this looks like the way that crowns should be made. And when they see, you know, the uh, cast gold technique, it looks like a blacksmithing technique technology, you know, to heat something <laughs> with a big torch and then spin it, let it spin around and shoot the gold into the mold. Seems you know, Mike, I, I'm jealous uh, of uh, dentists that are getting into CAD CAM today. Mm. Um, when I got in eight years ago or nine years ago, it was just one thing. And what I would tell people that are getting in today is um, there's a clear pathway of how you're going to grow your practice. And that pathway is examining all the features of CEREC and utilizing all the tools and the indications of CEREC. And if you can master that, you will have a phenomenal practice. Mm -hmm. And you'll start from the restorative end, and then your practice will grow to the implant end, then your practice will grow to the ortho end, and then by the time you're there, you're, <laughs> we'll have something else going there. So it is a clear pathway of where your practice wants to be. It's built in CE, to be honest with you. And look at all that bang for the buck somebody who yeah. buys today is getting compared to when you yeah. guys first purchased. You got ripped off, to be honest. I don't want to <laughs> say this in front of Roddy, but that yeah. wouldn't 
do anything compared Twice to what it does today. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that's a great point. I mean, because you can't just look at the ROI and say, I'm just replacing my crowns. I'm right. replacing crowns. I'm replacing my implants. I'm replacing, you know, supplementing ortho. Or adding services you didn't previously adding do. Adding services, things you couldn't do before. It is, like you said earlier, the center of your practice if you utilize it appropriately. The one other announcement today that I don't think I've touched on yet is the addition of uh, new carbide burrs for the mill. And what are some of the new material options that this opens up, and how do you see this you know, impacting your practices? So from the technology side, there's two um, principal uh, materials that are optimized with carbide milling, and those are um, green state zirconia, so pre-centered zirconia, and... Um, and temporary materials, so acrylics. And the the reason that um, carbides are a better uh, solution for that is because they actually carve the soft materials. So acrylics and green state zirconia are actually quite soft and porous, and they don't react so well to diamonds. Diamonds react really well with um, glass ceramics, for example, so Emacs or uh, Empress or something like this, and that's the right milling strategy for those materials. The right milling strategy for soft or porous materials is this carbide um, uh, burrs, and this is why we've introduced it into the into the system, and it's actually the first chairside system to offer more than one milling strategy. And the the benefit is more materials means a, a broader range of indications for the clinician. Mm -hmm. yeah, and I think if you look at where we are, I think correct me if I'm wrong, Roddy. There's worldwide about close to fifty thousand seric owners now. Mm -hmm you know, somewhere in that range. So it's a, it's a significant number. Mm -hmm. 20 years ago, there was maybe 4,000. So the companies out there weren't willing to innovate and invest in the R&D to support that. So we didn't have a lot of block choice because, you know, why am I going to spend all this money making a block for 4,000 dentists? Now that there's close to 50,000, you're seeing not only the zirconia materials come out for, for uh, CEREC, but we've got some new lithium-based materials coming out this year that are just going to give the clinician more choices. And as we move forward, as we continue on with CAD CAM, I think you're going to see more and more materials come out for CEREC because there's such a large market that manufacturers say, now it's worth my time to really innovate and invest from the material end of things and give more choices, which in the end is good for the CEREC owner. You can go a little further, Sam, and you can say actually that material development in dentistry today is only in the direction of CAD CAM. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think that's a yeah, fair absolutely. Statement. Yeah. I think it's a very fair statement. I'd like to ask a question on behalf of Jeff, who's not currently texting me. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I think, uh, I don't know Jeff that well, but I think he would want to ask this of Roddy. Um, when it comes to the Sarek Ortho, how would you guys uh, decide on choosing ClearCorrect as a partner? Yeah, uh, that was that was an easy one. We had um, so the there's two major uh, clear aligner providers in the market today, and um, one of them is a competitor of ours on the scanner side of the business, and the other one is not. So it made let's say uh, initial steps into the aligner technology uh, much easier with ClearCorrect. And they were uh, an extremely good partner, to be honest. They were extremely eager to work with us, and to uh, and there was a lot of crossover actually with our CERC customer base and the and the ClearCorrect customer base. So it made a lot of sense, and the so beta testing went smoothly and and ran very well. And 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 they did work on their side, we did work on our side, and at the end we've got a n very nice solution. So that, and uh, actually the the. The clear, correct customers uh, have 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 come up to become quite a significant number of dentists in the United States, and a lot of them Saragona. So it was a good fit at the end. Well, um, one other question I do have it sort of pertains to next year. You guys are celebrating your 30th anniversary of this technology. Are we finally at the point where people can stop looking at this as something from the future and you know sort of a niche for these guys who always want to have the cutting edge in their practice? Well, just for a second to hop in to say that today, you know, back at Glidewell Laboratories, 100% of the crowns that are made today are CAD CAM. So it's, you know, for us as a laboratory, it's it's not the future. It's 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 the absolute present. And Roddy, I think you're probably going to echo that as well. Yeah, definitely, Mike. And and I think that overall, uh, I, the the change that I notice over the last 10 years is exactly this one, from the sense that oh, that might make it or it might die. Uh, today, that idea about CAD CAM is, is, I think, gone. I think people understand that 
uh, almost every restoration they're getting from the laboratory has is either fully CAD CAM made or has a CAD CAM component in it, um, regardless of the lab that they're using. And that's changed the game completely. And so the migration to chair side is just logical and, uh, and, and certainly seems to be on that way. We've seen that interest in, in purchasing chair side has more than doubled in the last 12 months. So it's an indication that clinicians see the world exactly in this way. And I think when it comes to these anniversary events like CERC 27 and a half or CERC 30, I think um, what, it, what, what, what the energy that comes out of those meetings and what, what's, what's special about those meetings is nothing more than the group of people who are at those meetings. And that group of people are like a lot of dentists in this country. They want to do more in their practice. They want to be more. They want to offer more services to their patients. And technology is one of these things that lowers the hurdles to allow clinicians to do that. And I think that that enthusiasm is what kind of bubbles over and you, you, you get that sensation when you're, when you're at these events. And so any dentist, I think, who has a similar yearning to be better at what they do, to offer more services to their patients, to have more happy patients coming in and out of the practice, are gonna find a home uh, with Patterson, Serona, and, and at these anniversary events. We're looking forward to having everybody come and, and join us. And, Roddy, that's uh, just an absolute uh, perfect note to go out on and couldn't have uh, said it any better. Uh, that's fantastic. So on uh, uh, behalf of uh, all of us at uh, Serona and Patterson, Noah, thank you for coming out. Thanks to Dental Compare for helping to let dentists know about this uh, great technology and some of the services that they can start to provide for their patients that currently before would have been very difficult or impossible to do. So on behalf of myself, uh, Noah Levine, Serona Patterson, and the rest of our panel here, I want to thank you for your time and your continued commitment to quality dentistry.